Welcome to another episode of The Block Party. We are back. My co-host, Braden Coburn. Kobe, welcome. Hey, let's do this again. How you feeling, man? I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, Tony's here today. It's uh, it's going to be a good one. It, Tony's here, and you apparently we're, this is starting an hour late. What you were doing a podcast before a podcast with him? Like we heard you were interviewing him or something. What happened? Uh, we were catching up. We were catching <laughs> up. We walked into the rink. Those guys, him and Bogo, were still on the ice. So, um, and then they got a quick workout in. So it was, it was fun to catch up. Listen, Anthony. First, I have to know when we were talking on the group text about getting you on the podcast. They were just like. Hey, let's get C on the show. And then Kobe's like, oh, yeah, C's great. And I go, I had to break off and ask JP. I go, who's C? How did you go from like Anthony to Tony to Rocco? Like, now we're all the way down to C. Do the guys call you that, or is that just something that we do around the office? Um, I think a little bit of both, maybe. Um, some friends call me that and just kind of caught on a bit. But uh, yeah, I've had a lot of nicknames over the years. So, do you have I any s- favorites? Because I feel like C's just too bland for a guy like yeah, you. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, Tony's good. I okay. like Tony. That's that's probably my go-to one. But uh, I feel like you have time to like more to evolve as you go. You know, you're such a young guy. You think he's got enough more uh, nicknames you know, in him? I feel more like the me? best guys, like like Tony, like C. You know, they always you always have a new nickname coming down the pipe. You know, so you know what year is this for you? Year four, five. five I think. Year five. I feel like you know you get at least at least one a year, so you're good for at least another. Like my you know, my good ones coming soon. Yeah, like another dozen nicknames coming down the pipe. Maybe we can give him one. Maybe that maybe that can be something we can work on this year. By the way, so did you know? Did you know Tony that this guy was doing a podcast? And and what? How do you feel about it? You're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> They had me originally coming in here and just cleaning up and doing the vacuuming and stuff. And then somehow Seth got me on. I don't know. I'm very, very, very fortunate. Thank you, Seth. Did you ever see this guy as somebody that would, you know, do some talking after his career? Uh, yeah. I mean, Kobe's a great talker. Um, you know, wh- about anything, everything, he, you know, he could, uh, he can make a conversation out of it. So um, for sure, saw him doing this. And now that he's here, it's, uh, it's awesome to, to do this with him. You know what he really said? He, what? Told, me, he told me earlier. You well, know he really, tell me. He said, you know, it's a good thing you're doing podcasts because you got a face for podcasts. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, you know, it's, we're, that, it's that whole thing, right? We're on YouTube, okay? So this is, we got to be beautiful, okay? This, I got the beard. Oh, is that true? We're on yeah. camera? We're on camera. Ca- yeah. I didn't yeah. even know that. You guys didn't know? I, yeah. I, I thought you wore that shirt. I thought he was on camera. I thought we were on we're camera. All on, we're all on camera. We're all on camera. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they are really getting the set. Like, yes. We are, we are between the ferns. Yeah, this is really, like, this is, oh, re- this bush Seth is really. Kobe between the ferns. Yes, yeah, this I is really. It. I thought you wore that shirt because it was on camera. I, I wear this shirt all the time. It's Saskatchewan <laughs> pride, man. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> all right, so before, before uh, Mr. Sorelli got in here, you were kind of going over right when he got to the team, and you kind of brought up an interesting point, something I've never heard of before about his first game and that possibly being responsible for all the success that he's had in his career. Well, I don't know about all the success he's had in his career, but <laughs> you remember he, his he, first he was, game. He was, it was, you know, I didn't know a lot about uh, Tony before he came up and he got called up. He comes to us. He's a road game in Dallas has an unbelievable game a goal and assist. And then uh, did you go back to Syracuse? I don't think he did. Right. No, I didn't. Like there's not that many guys that come up, he played the whole year in the Myers, um, got got his opportunity, and just took the bull by the horns, you know, never looked back. I, I just, I don't think too many guys do that. And kudos to him for being ready to taking a shot and really uh, running with it. So Kobe thinks that that kind of like, you know, did you just, did you just feel like a bunch of confidence after you scored in your first game? And, you know, did that carry you? Or do you think that helped you? Because that's kind of what Kobe was hitting on before I found interesting. Yeah, I mean, obviously... You know, getting called up and stuff, and, and your first game with you know in the NHL, it's it's nerve wracking and you know, but it's exciting at the same time. So, um, but I mean, Tampa's been good for so many years. So playing with any guy on that team obviously helped. Um, but I mean, yeah, you know, to get a goal, it kind of in your first game, there's is definitely gives you some confidence and stuff like that. Um, but at the end, you know, I'm still a young kid, just kind of just trying to work hard, just trying to you know make a splash, kind of I guess, and. Um, you know, it worked out and, and I was able to stay. So, but, uh, you know, I just, like I said, just kind of wanted to go in there, work hard and, and show them what I could do. What did you think about Sorelli? Like during his first season, did you go, Hey, this kid's going to be a two way superstar. I mean, because you, when we had Sergey on last week, you pretty much are saying you discovered Sergey. So I want to hear what you thought. I, 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 wanna... I definitely did not say that. I definitely did not. You, okay. You're making something way. Out Maybe of, that's out what of... I heard. Maybe it was an echo in the room or something. Uh, what did I think about Sorelli? I, you know, I think, it, I don't know if you noticed, but like I was always kicking the body wash towards him in the shower. Like, Hey man, like 
let's let's up this intake a little bit. You know, it's pretty pretty greasy guy coming from junior, but um, no, it, you know, you just you see a maturity in guys' games um, from a young age like Tony um, that just it's just rare, and he had it. He had it right away. He kind of supplied our team uh, that year when he came up with something that was uh, that we needed, and he filled a void and he did a great job. Kudos to him. So, Tony, I interviewed you uh, during the pandemic when you know every, everything was on pause, and uh, you, Zoom, yeah. yeah, and uh, and you cooked. You were cooking chicken parmesan. It was you know the big news because nothing was going on. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, Tony's cooking. So I want to know: has anything evolved since then? Have you cooked for any of your teammates, or have you just you know are you just an Uber Eats guy now that we're back to normal? Um. Yeah, I'm I'm a lot of Uber Eats, but once in a while I'll cook. I cooked for uh, uh, Pointer actually. He came over, we did a video on. Uh, he tried my chicken parm. He he liked it. I mean, I don't know if he was just saying that because uh, to be a nice guy, but he, he seemed to enjoy it. Okay. Um, yeah, but Tony, you're like about. I, I feel like you're one of the pickiest eaters I've been around. Like, there's not a lot of stuff that you really really yeah, so, venture out. Like, yeah. there's a lot of food restrictions in your diet. Yeah, I'm a very picky eater. Um, obviously, it's cool to said. I've gone to restaurants and they've actually denied my order a couple times. <laughs> they're just like, you're not, no, like I we're love, not. I, we're I, not I would doing love that sitting you. beside him at a restaurant because you know appetizers would come up and he'd be like, just like pushing stuff to the side, and, and me being the carnivore, uh, glutinous guy I am, I'd just be like, oh, I'll take Tony's yeah. share, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Have they really rejected orders at restaurants? One, one time it happened. There what'd was, you What'd you try to get? It was a sushi roll. I can't remember. It was a sushi roll, and I did. I didn't want like two things on it. And they're just like, no, like the chef's not going to do that. Yeah. Did you accept it? I would have gone back there and had a chat with the chef. No, I was just like, everyone kind of started laughing at me, all the guys. So it's it ridiculous. Kinda, it was kind of embarrassing. But. So uh, we are supposed to have Pointer on the podcast, and I think he had to reschedule, and then he offered you up uh, to do the podcast. Yeah. yeah, he offered. So we know that you guys have an interesting relationship. Um, uh, obviously, the Crocs are a big thing with Pointer. What, how do you feel about those? Like, do you, did he wear them over to your house? Like, do you oh. find them to be offensively ugly? Um, do you have any... I don't have a lot on the Crocs. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a Crocs guy, so okay. I won't be going out wearing them. Um, he does wear them everywhere, though, which, I mean, there's there's a time and place, I think, for them. But <laughs> I, I got to be careful what I say because Bogo's a big Crocs guy, and I know he'll be, like, listening to this and, and know I'm tripping Crocs. So. Bogo's, Bogo's a big Crocs guy. Oh, he's a huge Crocs guy. Really? On, on the same level as Pointer, I'd say. Like, he loves Crocs, and if, if you make fun of his Crocs, like, he'll... he'll uh, He'll, he'll let you know. Yeah. Wow. So are those the only two croc guys on the team? Crocs guys? I feel like we need to know this because they have to yeah. go in their own category. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Kobe, what about you? You don't have any crocs, do you? Uh I feel like I got a pair of crocs when uh like maybe my first year in the minors, and I think I still have them. That's that's about the extent of my crocs. Man. What yeah. well, I don't know. What is it about? I don't know. Is Pointer okay with the fact that he's, you know, so famous for his crocs? I guess I can ask yeah, him this, I think but Pointer he I mean, I don't think he really cares. Okay. I think yeah. He's just like I think he's obviously there's some buzz around it, but that's what he, you know, he's he's gonna wear his Crocs, and doesn't matter if you tell him not to wear them or to wear them, he's gonna, you know, if he likes them, he'll wear them. So Tony, you've mentioned Pointer a couple of times. You guys are obviously super good friends, um, but I've experienced you guys at a different level, and the arguments that you two get into, I know it's playful banter. Um, oh, what are they? What are they arguing about the, here? It, it's everything and anything, and I don't know if you can elaborate on that and let people know just kind of how your relationship is. But I, I've heard arguments all the way from cucumbers to pickles to does toothpaste <laughs> does toothpaste uh, do the different brands of toothpaste do anything? Oh my goodness! And, and, and you know <laughs> these topics will range from anything to everything, and I, you're kind of stubborn. He's stubborn. You guys will argue your point. Basically, yeah. till you're dead. There's just like no, there's no winner. We just like keep going back and forth. But it's funny is that me and Porn will get into an argument about something, and then you'll the whole team will be in on it. Like the whole team will have their say. Um, you got to pick a side. You're either yeah. like a pickle side or a cucumber side kind of guy. And so, yeah. do you guys really have a pickle cucumber debate? Because that's, yeah, I mean, we did. that's cut and dry. That's pickles but, all day. I mean, me and Porn had a conversation that this can't be brought up anymore because it was. It's getting too much. Oh, <laughs> so we, we <laughs> mentally exhausting. Yeah. It, it might have been mentally exhausting for them, but as an outsider, it was mentally exhausting as well. Are you guys next to each other in the locker room? Or are you shouting across the locker room at each other with this uh, stuff? That's not more in the locker room. It's like it'll be like on the plane. We sit beside each other on the plane or um, you know, in the training room and, and 
practice days or like it's wherever they play cards together on the plane as well so that it continues into the card games which can be a little bit of annoying i feel like somebody's told me about the card games with sorelli and pointer getting into it i don't know who it was but definitely a player that i talked to last year it gets contentious i think have you yeah. been in those card games? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was in the card games. Oh, so you're right. I, I, was, I, was, I was solidly was, in the card uh, games. He was stirring it up for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, you started up between them. It, it, it's a long time you spend on the plane. It's uh, you, need, you need something to talk Does about. Does it ever get legitimately chippy, or it's just all in fun? It depends who it was. Uh, I think Louis Domingue would take it to another level. He, he brought a level of intensity to the card games <laughs> oh. that was... Oh, no. Maybe a little cross the line sometimes. <laughs> 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 But yeah. for the most part, it was all good fun. <laughs> um, Sorelli, uh, obviously we have Halloween coming up, but I want to go back to the Easter Bunny uh, last year. The the I think was it Ryan McDonough asked yeah, you to, it, to, yeah. to be the Easter Bunny, and you did a great job. It was all over social media. Um, is that something that you're looking forward to doing again? Do you feel like maybe it's somebody else's turn? And, uh, I mean, is Santa Claus in, in play for this year? Um, I haven't thought about my other – acting roles i guess so far <laughs> but um i mean if the, you know they asked me to do it it was a lot of fun it was fun to you know bring a smile to the kids and stuff like that and um how'd they ask you how did did they is that a text is that kind of just like i know i'm being did you think they were joking no i mean i no i thought there was i mac just came up to me and I, he's like you know it would be cool maybe if you can <laughs> you know dress up as easy spending for the kids and i was like yeah that's that'd be awesome if you you know gave me the costume and stuff and I'll show up and, and do it for sure. It was really hot in that suit. I tell you that. <laughs> like I was sweating and the head was a little bit too big. And some of the kids kind of caught on because they could see my shoes underneath the oh, off the suit. suit, off the suit. So, so kids would be yelling. That's not the real Easter. Bunny. <laughs> Jeez, Matt could even spring for like a suit that and, could cover uh, your whole leg. I mean, good Lord. And the head was bopping back and forth a bit, but. So are you no talking while you're under the, uh, yeah, while you're the Easter Bunny? Like no talking at all, right? No talking. No talking. A lot of pictures. A lot of. You don't want to be like swearing at the kids, being like, "Hey, like this kid, like." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's, me in the crotch. Whose kids were the most annoying? Yeah. All right, I'll let you. I'll let you off the hook. Um, Tony, have you been out to Thunder Alley? All have you? Have you seen this this giant version uh, of yourself? I've out? seen it on social media. I haven't been up there yet, but that's pretty cool. What do you think? I mean, what do you think that you're like, this is, you know, 200 foot version of you out yeah. there for the whole world? To see? You know, Kobe was never featured on Thunder Alley. So, I mean, it is, it is special to be up there. I never was. I, I, was he like a late edition or was he up there all summer? <laughs> I like, think I, they might've just put, put him up, but yeah. Just put him up. I, well, it makes sense. It pro they probably spent all summer just like airbrushing away and just trying to <laughs> fix, <laughs> trying to fix any little thing they could. Just Try so make it look you know, people eating their hot dogs and stuff on Thunder Alley there, they, you know, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't get too disgusted. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> but and you know what? You know what the biggest thing was, Tony. Honestly, <laughs> he's like, the, he's like. The biggest thing is they really had to fill in the beard because the beard actually is coming in better than it's it has getting better in the past. than the past. It is, yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Much better, much he has better. a spotty beard. It's hard to grow facial hair. Or? Well, it's. I think it's your Italian roots. Is it kind of coming yeah, in it's late? A little bit of everything. Like, I think by the time you're thirty, you'll like you'll be like a bogo, right? I don't know if that's maybe if I don't shave for five years, <laughs> get, get up there. Oh yeah, it's, you're supposed to shave, I guess, if you want thicker hair, right? Or is that, that a myth? I think that's like a myth. I think it's I, a old wives' tale. Yeah, they say if you shave, you have to just start shaving more. I don't really know. I don't know. Uh, maybe we better get like a hair follicle expert on the show. One of these days. We, we, we're always looking for like reasons and more new guests. Yeah, so maybe we venture away from the lightning players and then go to. That would be interesting as long as we could have the plant in the background. So I think that we could lock that the down. between us, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm saying right now. You guys set that up before? I, I, we're thinking that maybe, you know, you look like you get someone to do your hair quite often. Maybe you have a, a person for us, you know? <laughs> All right. Are you tired of BOGO yet since you guys have been rehabbing together? Is he getting on your nerves? Are you ready to just, you know, rehab with, on your own? Mm, no. No, I need BOGO. <laughs> no, but BOGO makes it, you know, to do it with someone, it makes it obviously a lot, a lot better, a lot more fun. I mean... Bogo's an awesome guy, so he's uh, he's definitely bringing the mood up. The one thing that I could do, I could think he could do better at is try maybe pushing our times back a little. Like he loves a good early morning workout. Oh yeah, uh, he's, he's, a, a, he's, he's a dad. dad. Yeah, yeah. Dad, yeah. yeah. So dad time. They'd be like, you guys could come in at ten or eight. You guys choose. And then Bogo's like, yeah, we'll be here at eight. And I'm like, all right. But I'm not a morning person, so. That's the only so, thing I could say about him. So what are you doing at night that's keeping you up? I, I know your choice of TV, um, Seth, 
Sorelli's choice of watching television is questionable at best. I'm okay. What's he, what's he into? I, so I went over to his house a couple times and we've hung out and, and, and he's put on these different shows and it's, it's just garbage. I got to tell you. Is right it now. like, what? <laughs> what, what, with, what? Do you remember? I, what are you guys watching? Breaking some Bad? Some sort of reality. No, oh, so it's like the Bad. worst <laughs> reality TV you could ever watch. Okay, I like reality TV. I think it's, it's hilarious. It's, it, was, it was awful. Jersey Shore Housewives? What are we watching, it, it Tony? Was, it was like a Jersey Shore like, spinoff. I don't know. <laughs> like, that's how bad it was. It's like hilarious, though, to like, it's reality TV. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's like, I think it's just hilarious when people get in arguments and like, Start fighting and like you know like it's fun. Was that it keeps me occupied? Do you remember what show it was that you watched the I, day that we came over? Because it really seems to have stuck with him. He's deeply know, affected. He, like, it he really, really, it really, it really, really hated. hated you. You. Yeah, <laughs> it's surprised he was able to show up today, knowing that happened years ago. He was scarred when he went over yeah. to Tony's house. What are you watching now, Tony? Like, let's tell him. I'm not back then. Are you still watching reality TV? I mean, not you, as not as much. Um, you binging anything? Sergey was watching Dahmer. Oh uh, yeah, I watched Dahmer. You did? I would just watched actually the the Olympic, uh, the U.S. Olympics team uh, documentary there. Okay, that's pretty cool. Documentary guy. So I'm right. learning. You're redeeming yourself a little bit. Yeah, he's getting. All right. So listen. So let's talk about the uh, the deal that came together in the off season. You know, right when the season ended, you got a, a big extension. You know, I want to know kind of how that came together for you, and then how did you find out that you're going to be part of a, the trio of extensions? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, uh, Julian and my agent were talking a bit and wanted to get something done, and, and uh, Tampa's definitely where you know I want to be. And I mean, everything about the organization is unbelievable. From you know, from Jeff all the way down, um, management, you know, the guys on the team, you know, we seem to be good every year and, and have a chance. So um, it was an easy decision for me to to want to be back here, and uh, awesome for you know Sergey and Cerny as well to to see them too. Um, Sign as well. It was pretty cool for you know all three of us knowing we'll be here for a little bit. Did your agent say, "Hey, listen, we can't. We're gonna. This is gonna be a part of something." Were you were you first? Do you know who got signed first uh, in the trio? Or I we don't know. know who was first and stuff like that. I I think they all came out relatively, you know, quick yeah, the same one, time, one after another. So I I have no idea who first. And to me, it doesn't really matter. You right. Know, obviously, for you know, for all all of us to be signed is is great. What was the first thing you did after after the extension? You call anybody? You go out shopping? What happens? Uh, no, I obviously like I, most of my family members knew and stuff before it came out, but, uh, you know, I got a lot of messages from friends and, and, you know, extended family that I guess didn't know. <laughs> extended <laughs> family. Tell. Yeah. Friends yeah. from the minors so, <laughs> coming out of the woodwork. Yeah. yeah. You gotta love so, those family. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, I didn't, I didn't do any shopping yet and stuff like that. Um, he's very happy with his, uh. Little uh, yeah. spoiler, a Mazda car he's got, you know, two-door <laughs> cruiser. I was going to say, let's not tell everybody what his kind of car he has, but you've also, the fans are always waiting for you after the games, yeah, I mean, right? I'm sure the fans know. I mean, yeah, the fans that are waiting. Yeah. He sees what we're driving out in. I'm, I don't know if you, have you seen mine? It's, you haven't seen my updated one? No, I haven't seen it. Did you get something something new? Uh, no, Honda Civic. Honda Civic, okay, perfect. Turbo mode. <laughs> did sport, you, sport mode. Did you get a Honda sport Civic, mode. really? No, no. Oh. I, that's what I... No, that's what I had. Uh, I was like, he really is a man of the people. Look uh, at this. He's a Honda Civic. I had a, I had it when I was, uh, when I was in the minors. I had a Honda Civic. I, uh, I got it in my last year in junior, and then I drove to Syracuse, and uh, some of the vets on the Syracuse team uh, started chirping me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't too uh, happy with my Honda Civic, but uh, now my brother has it, so he's got a, he's got a free car, so he, he's happy. That's great. All right. I want to know, uh, I want to talk about the parade from the first year and uh, I kind of got in the mix and I saw everybody, you know, great time. And at Raymond James stadium, I spotted you and I, I spotted you just kind of, you know, leaning against the wall by yourself, you know, and I, and I talked to Tyler Johnson holding and, up the wall, right? Yeah. Hold, holding up. The, I go, <laughs> I legit, I don't, I don't really drink. Give me a glass of wine. Like I'm falling over. So I was like, Oh my God, is, is he okay? You know, and I've asked everybody that I've interviewed over the last couple of years, like, Hey, was Tony okay that day? Like, did it just, did it get away from you? Did you ever, did you come back down? What happened? No, I, uh, yeah, I was I was not in a good place at that moment, and I knew that when my mom texted me, she saw she there, she was watching the parade and she saw me in the corner of a shot, leaning. I think the same place that you saw me. So <laughs> she's like texting me like, "What are you okay? Like, what's going on?" So I knew I was in a bad place, but I did catch a second win 
later, and uh, I was good after that. Wow. Okay. So what did yeah. you learn? What did you learn the second time around during the second parade from from the first um, one? To c- control myself a little bit better <laughs> on the trains. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I learned absolutely nothing. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> How did you do during the, the parade, was Kobe? Just as fun. I, I was great. Seth. Were you? Oh yeah. I was on high beam right there all oh. night. I don't know. You can handle yourself pretty well, right? I mean, he's a way sure. bigger than guy than me. So if we're drinking the same, I'm gonna feel it more. Yeah, I was just, I was just you very, con- I was very concerned about you. I just was like, somebody go help Tony. Like, there's Tony. Well, I was, I was, I was good. Yeah, you're was, good. One was, thing I do know about Tony, he, he can rally. He can yeah, rally. He's a rallier. Yeah. He's a rallier. So can we just ask, like, I know you guys don't like to talk about injuries and all that stuff, but do you know, like, when when you had the injury and when did you decide that you know surgery was the route that you wanted to take? Yeah, I I heard it in game four in the in the finals there. Um, I kind of fell awkwardly. You know, I felt my shoulder kind of pop out. Um, and I didn't know at that time I needed surgery. Um, well, after the playoffs, I got an MRI and I tore um, my labrum, I think it was. So, you know, that required surgery to fix that. So I got it done fairly early. I mean, obviously it was something I had to do to – to get better and stuff. So obviously it's tough hearing, hearing that, that you need to be surgery and, you know, it's an extended period of time for rehab and stuff like that. But, um, and then Bogle got his, so then I was, kind of, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't excited that Bogle had to have the surgery and stuff. And, you know, you never want someone to be injured and have surgery, but um, he had to do the same thing. So I was kind of, you know, happy that be able to do stuff together and stuff like that, rehab together. Cause like I said, he's such a great guy to be around. So this is your first kind of like, major surgery right have you haven't done anything like this before no this is my first major surgery and, and first time missing like major time i've obviously missed games here and there or maybe weeks a couple weeks but nothing yeah this long <laughs> kobe what's the yeah. worst injury you had um you know what i would say probably the worst one was we were in the conference finals when i was in philadelphia and i got hit in the eye with a puck sergey gonchar uh took a slap shot deflection Jeez. and it, it smoked me right above the eye and concussion, like 65 stitches. Um, it was, it was kind of, it, yeah, it was ugly. It was ugly, but so you're, yeah, you're still so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <Seth. laughs> See, just, just dripping in sarcasm. Thank you. 65 stitches. I, I, I feel a... like, I feel like my chair should just get a little closer. Maybe I'll just get a little grip on your leg or something. Well, well you know, the first yeah. one we did with Sergey, we were very, very close. This is, we're actually too far away for this recording. So the puck, t- I mean, and there's nothing they can do about that other than just stitching you up, right? Yeah. The pro the problem was, is yeah. The concussion part, you know, I remember my eyes, sw- I was swollen right over and, you know, kind of like Tony, you know, you're trying to be a warrior. It's playoffs. You're trying to be out there battling. I remember skating and skating backwards and all of a sudden like bumping into the wall because my spatial awareness was all off. So <laughs> I kind of ended my playoffs uh, a little bit early and, and Pittsburgh ended up going to the finals that year. Because of that, because of that. I, I don't know. They, they, they had a good team. <laughs> Tony, when you reflect back on the last couple of, of seasons, like what are, the, what are the images that pop in your head? Um, I mean, obviously winning those, those two years. And, and Does the first one or the second one come into your head first? <laughs> There's got to be um, one, and there's got to be a favorite one, too. I don't know. They're both very different. They're unique. Obviously, the first year was in the bubble with no fans and stuff like that, so you're with the guys a lot more, so I think that made us you know, a lot tighter just being with each other all the time. Um, and then the second one, you know, you have the fans there roaring for you. We won it at home, so that was that was pretty special. You know, my family was, was here. I was able to see them after the game and stuff like that. They were able to see the cup and stuff, so... Um, I honestly don't know which one would pop up. I think they're they're both something that uh, I remember forever, obviously. And then um, obviously last year is you know disappointing the way it ended, but uh, I think that kind of fuels us even more to to try and get back. So you're 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 a consummate winner. Like your Memorial Cup, 2015, I believe. 2015, yeah. Two Stanley Cups. Like you're 25 years old. Like what motivates you now? Like you've kind of got you know, such a great resume at such a young age. Like, where, where do you go from here? Tony? You think he should retire? Yeah. You think he <laughs> no, should retire? Right? Just, you know, I didn't get my cup till the end. You right. Know? Um, but he's got two already. He's a Memorial Cup champion. Everywhere he goes, he wins. I'm just wondering, like. I, mean, I have a couple losses under my belt as well. Yeah, but, you know, championships, you know, you talk to a guy like Corey Perry. He wins, I think, in his first year. 
and he's still battling to get the next one. Oh, we got to get Corey you a know? cup. I mean, yeah. he's been through it the last few years. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, where do you go from here? What, what, what keeps you hungry? I think just, just trying to get back there. I think just obviously the feeling that we had when you win and, you know, going through that summer or the next year and then winning again, just that moment of you, you know, holding the cup in front of everyone and then, you know, getting your day with it at home and in front of your family, friends, and have a huge party. I think just to be on top of the mountain is is you know, such a great feeling that you want to get back there. You want to do that again, and you want to keep doing that. Yeah. Did, where does the, your game go from now? Like, where, like, what do you want to add to your game? Like, is there anything uh, you want to add to your game? Yeah, you've been, the, you've yeah. been like the premier defensive center shutdown, adding offense, unbelievable penalty killer, just tenacious on the puck all over the ice. Like, what? What more does your game have? Yeah, I think trying to get better in all those aspects, a little bit better in all those aspects. Um, I think my offensive game, trying to get better there. Um, you know, trying to make a couple more plays here and there, hopefully score some a couple more goals. So, um, but, you know, obviously don't want to be sacrificing different stuff, but I think overall just kind of work on, you know, my skills maybe and, and my overall game. Um, but one thing I probably try and be a little bit better offensively. Yeah. There's only been one game so far, but it, was it was it tough for you to watch the guys? Uh, how, I mean, and how are you watching these games? Are you and Bogo together going, man, we should be out there right now? They could they would have won if we were playing. <laughs> no, um, obviously sucks not not being there and then not being able to play. Um, but you know, being Bogo, Bogo came over actually to my place and um, we ordered sushi, and he loved that because he <laughs> says he hasn't found a good sushi spot yet. So I gave him a good one. Um, but yeah, he, we watched it. Obviously, it sucks not being able to go out there and battle, you know, with the guys and um, and, and watching them. But, um, you know, there's some things you get to pick up on from, from watching the game as opposed to playing it. So um, I think just kind of learning some different things and, and stuff like that, you know, obviously sick watching Cooch play from TV and other <laughs> plays he's making and Pointer and, and everyone at Sammer's one time ago was, you know, see how hard he shoots it from, from TV. So it's... Uh, you get it's a nice. different perspective different on perspective, it. Different perspective, yeah, on, on the games. Yeah, I always found sometimes when you're out, you try to use that time you're out as a learning experience. You know, you just see the game a different way, and sometimes it slows down for you, and um, you can kind of add things to your game when you get back. Did you, you find that at all? Yeah, no, I, I think just watching certain, you know, like players and, and plays that, you know, guys on team make, or even just like maybe system-wise, and, you know, that guy might, that guy's actually open. Maybe on the ice you don't see it, but he's open there. I mean, obviously – power of tv yeah you see see it up top so it's i always a lot felt easier. like there was like more time you, you have more time yeah. than you think when you're on the ice everything just seems like it's coming fast but when you're watching the game it just seems like maybe that extra split second there's like time to make that play i mean when we watched it up top in the i think it was the last preseason game we watched in the press box and you're like the ice is massive like there's so much room out there but then you go play in a game and everyone's like yeah you have half a second to do something with the puck so it's a different perspective yeah what part of your game do you take the most pride in? Like uh, Kobe was going, you you can do it all. Is there just something that you go may not show up in the stat sheet that you just absolutely take a bunch of pride in? Uh, I think you know the defensive side of the game. Um, I mean, if we're going out there and, and, and trying to shut down a, other team's top line, and, and you know the coaching staff, you know, says that's our job, then obviously take pride in, in trying to get that job done. And if that's what we have to do to help the team win, you know, go out there and do that. So uh, I'd probably say that's probably the most thing and is, is just trying to be good all over the ice, but, you know, especially in the, on the D side of it. All right. You've been watching the team, you know, just tell us one of the younger guys that we should keep an eye on this year. Who do you think is the, uh, the next big star for the lightning? Um, I guess say that the, the two young guys on four that we have, you know, Keps and, and forts. I mean, they, they work super hard, you know, they're in every battle. Uh, they win puck battles. They're fast. They kind of could do it all. So um, definitely watching those guys and uh, have a big impact. When did you feel like a veteran, by the way? Do you do you still feel like you're you're kind of new? Or do you feel like, man, I've been here for a long time? Uh, or are you just in the middle? I think in the middle. It's 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 weird because we kind of have an, a little bit of an older team. Um, but I've been with the guys for so long, and and I think winning kind of you know brings everyone even closer, so you're even tighter, and um, just going through those experiences so kind of makes me feel, I guess, a little bit older. But um, I I feel like I'm kind of in the middle. Is there anything you miss about Kobe? And it's okay if you if there's not. Like, Okay. No. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, he's one of those guys that when you look at him and look at the way he is, you know, you just see like leader all over him. You know, I know you were a captain when you were in uh, junior, and I feel like that's something that, you know, 
you've been through the gauntlet already at such a young age. You've got all this experience. And I just feel like as you mature, you know, your leadership's just going to keep coming out more and more. And you're a guy that, you know, you're a fun guy to be around, but more than anything, you're one of those guys that leads by example on the ice and people see that and they want to respond. They want to make sure that, Hey, see how hard Tony's working out there. Like I got to make sure I pick up my game and try to match his intensity. And as you can see, Kobe's such a or, you know Kobe's such a big fan of yours. He's going to be waiting uh, in the player parking lot for the Honda yeah. Civic to pull out so <laughs> he can get his jersey. I know where he route. lives. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. where I live. Show, I'll, I'll be there looking through the window watching him watch uh, Desperate Housewives. Let, let me let me let me know when we're getting the Jersey Shore uh, marathon going on. I'll stop by. But, I mean, Kobe, Kobe was great too. Just for early on in my career, I mean, he was a guy that I could go to for anything, and, and he's always trying to help me in, in any way that he can. You know, he was a great veteran to. To be around, and I mean, for guys working hard, he's you know he he's always the last one to leave the ice. He's always working on, working on something almost too much at, at some points. It's like Kobe, K, get off the ice, yeah. <laughs> or in the gym. I mean, he was in the gym working Kobe's out. One with of those us. guys. He, he he came to us. He's so polished and ready to go. It was uh, there. There wasn't a lot to be said for him. How happy were you that you could get this guy a cup? I mean, yeah, of course. I've winning a cup, and that kind of bonds us forever. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> so I do miss Kobe at the card table, though. That's one thing. Yeah, the, we had, we, uh, we had who, good chemistry. We had good chemistry at the card table. Who's replaced him at the card table? Do you guys? We, I mean, we've had a couple, couple replacements because originally it was me, you, Louis, and Ern, Ernie. Yeah, originally. Originally, yeah. and then it's, Ernie and Louis were out. Yeah, and then Pointer, Go, Pointer, and Gordo. Yeah, that's right. Came in. And then... And Gordo. Gordo was a mini snap show at the yeah, card table, Gordo, too. Gordo was a snap show. Yeah. Me and Gordo butted head, too, at, the, at yeah. the card Did you table. get kicked off Gordo's team, or was that Louis? No, that was Louis. I got Louis. kicked off Louis. Louis team, yeah. Yeah. And then, then you were gone, so then Goody was in. That's right. And then, and then Gordo and Goody are gone, so now it's Bolgo and Footer. Wow. Look yeah. at that timeline. I That's love the, timeline, the yeah. timeline of the card table. Listen, people need to know this. They like the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Let's listen, Tony C, appreciate you stopping by. Kobe, great job. Is anything you want to sign uh, off with? No. I mean, you could. You... No, I think Tony said enough. I <laughs> think, think should, as sooner we can cut him kick, off, kick, the kick better. Off? <laughs> We're on video, Kobe. Did oh, you know that? Oh. You want to wave bye to the people. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, man. C- keep up the rehab. We can't wait to see you out there. No problem. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Right, Thanks so much.